<laughs> Welcome to the Ma Monday, May 20th meeting of the Conway Select Board here at the Conway Grammar School at 6 o'clock. Um, at 6.30 it will be the joint meeting of the Finance Committee. Um, call the meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of May 6. I looked them over, they look good. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And before we do anything else, since we have visitors and a couple people uh, waiting on us, um, if it's okay with everybody else, um, discussion and vote on hiring Christopher Miner as the police officer. Training hours between now and July 1st, 20 <coughs> hours per week. This will be the finance committee here for a little bit. There you go. Here, I'll let you go in first so they can have a better look at you. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Welcome to Conway, Chris. Thank you. Um, and just, you know, the, you want to do this ever again, prop, the, but we just, this is sort of a Conway thing where you're, when you come on to employment to introduce, yeah. this is your chance to introduce yourself to the town. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, that's, that's basically the purpose of this. You can tell whatever you want to tell about yourself. And so, um, ready? Sure. <laughs> go, go, go. Um, so I've been in policing for a little over eight years now. Uh, I've worked in multiple different towns in the county. I grew up in the area in Buckland. Uh, went to school at Westfield State, got my bachelor's degree there, and a minor in psychology. Uh, after I graduated there, I started working in the town of Northfield full time. Um, from there, I worked in the towns of Irving, Shelburne, Buckland. So I've always been in the county since I started my career. Um, I enjoy the outside, um, always hunting, fishing, and the outdoors in some capacity. So, you know, I grew up in the area. I love the area. So this is kind of the place I want to be. Great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? No, we talked earlier. And yeah, cool. It's just, it's good to have uh, yeah. somebody local nearby because you understand small town values. Um, policing in small towns is about de-escalation, as you know, more than anything. So um, we'd be happy to have you on. Definitely. And you're willing to come on too. That's even more important. <laughs> like, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good job, Chief. Hey, I try. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. Out pounding the out pounding the pavement, looking. There you go. So, uh, yeah. Um, um, make a motion to vote uh, for for a vote to hire Christopher Miner. At, I mean, this is what I read. Police officer training hours between now and July first. 20 hours per week after July 1st, salary $21.44 per hour. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Welcome to come. Yeah, so my, my goal is to get him out there and train so when Randy retires mm -hmm. in June, he'll be ready to go. Good, good. July 1st and just kind of plop him into that 20 plus hours. Good find. Whatever. Whatever <laughs> works for, for Chris. So. Great. Because he does do, he's got other employment that he kind of wants to stick into and yeah. progress with that so he mm -hmm. has lifelong learning skills. Great. Which I think is great. So. Yeah, wonderful. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, so when you see him, feel free to wave to him. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we wave. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. So you have no questions? Thanks for coming. I don't wave. Yeah. 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 No, you don't. You're grumpy you old Say for an hour there's dessert. dessert. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know if I can last a little yeah, more. That was nice of you to wear a jacket and tie, though. I feel bad. At yeah, right. I left mine at home. I figured out. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and if it's okay, since there's somebody else waiting on Zoom, um, the discussion of the. Well, go ahead, Bernie. Oh, um, okay, Megan, I think we're ready if you are, yep. Um, I'm gonna let Megan take it away, but basically we were looking at trying to figure out how to do more improvements on Shelburne Falls Road, which as we all know had quite a few issues between culvert replacements and trying to stabilize the road, so. But that intro, this is Megan yeah. Rhodes from the FERCOG who's been helping us out. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. So uh, we have a grant funding window opportunity before us. The Community One Stop grant um, is now open and it's closing on June 4th, I believe, June 7th. 
Um, and it involved the what previously was the strap grant is now rolled into this this community one stop grant. So we have up to a million dollars in which we could apply for <clears throat> to repair uh, a culvert on Shelburne Falls Road. So there's been you might be aware that there's two culverts that have failed on Shelburne Falls Road. One is at Emerson Hollow, and one is just north of there, which I believe was just replaced this past weekend. That that northern culvert using emergency measures. Um, that southern culvert at Emerson Hollow has not yet been fixed, but definitely <laughs> needs to be fixed. Um, we are so what we've done is we've asked GZA for a cost estimate to what it would cost to replace that and the one that goes actually under Emerson Hollow because since they're so close to each other, we kind of have to consider them as one connected culvert. Um, and so their estimate came in around 750,000 to replace the structures both under Emerson Hollow and under Shelburne Falls Road. Um, it is it looks like it is a streams, which means we have to meet stream crossing standards. At this point, we have to assume that. Um, we may have to, we may get lucky and have um, some wetland specialists come out and say that it is in fact not a stream, and we may be able to go with a smaller structure. But at this point, we'd like to apply for the larger grant just to be safe to include the co cover the cost that it may take to build a stream crossing standards uh, structure. So um, I'm working on the application helping Veronique with this. Um, what we'll be submitting in the application, if it's okay with you guys, we will be asking for $750,000 to replace those two structures under Emerson Hollow and under Shelburne Falls Road. Um, at the same time, we have asked, we've asked GZA to do the estimate because we know that they are going to be doing um, work up in the Pine Hill neighborhood, which could affect flow into this culvert. And so they have taken that into account in their modeling for the cost estimates. So we're making sure that um, not only do they capture current flows, but also potentially uh, larger flows as those projects up on Pine Hill are done if, if they do proceed. Um, that way we want to make sure we're, we're designing to proper standards. Um, we also at the same time acknowledge and <laughs> see in the map that the South River is it's getting close to Shelburne Falls Road and so we wanted to see if um, before we put all this money into these projects maybe we should stabilize the banks along the South River um, as well or as in complement to this project. Um, so what GCA has done is also spec'd out the cost of stabilizing the bank, um, the the most northern bend that hits uh, where the South River hits Shelburne Falls Road, just above where the culvert was just replaced this past weekend. Their estimate for that is about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so we're not going to be able to apply for both at the same time since we're limited to one million dollars for this grant application. But now that we know what it costs, we can then start looking, bring over other rocks and see what other sources of funding we have. Um, but in their estimates, um, that most northern spot seems to be where, should be the highest priority in which the South River, the Shelburne Falls Road becomes stabilized um, to protect against the South River. So at least we know that. We were hoping that that wasn't gonna be the answer and we could get both done with this one great application, but it doesn't look like it. So for now, we're going to confine our grant application just to the culverts under Emerson Hollow and Shelburne Falls Road. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I will be needing a letter of commitment from the select board um, say to support this grant application if you guys do decide that this is a good thing to go after. All right, I got a question. Uh, forgive me for not turning around and looking at you. Um, sorry, if I do that, I might like break my neck right now. But um, but um, no, that was nothing personal to you. Would by that, and just a basketball injury from Sunday. Um, so the is there is there a um, a matching requirement for this grant for the town? There is a match requirement. Um, it's twenty percent, I believe, is what it was. Twenty twenty five percent. Twenty five, yeah. Twenty five percent, yeah. Um, Veronique believed that we could use the emergency funding we got from storm relief this past winter as the match for this. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Veronique. No, that's but that's the only source of funding I know of that we could. And how much? What's twenty five percent of seven fifty? I can't do math in my head. Well, it would that's fifteen hundred. Uh, yeah. Fifteen thousand. Oh no, no, it's no it's a lot more than that. One hundred eighty eight, one hundred eighty seven, one hundred five hundred. Yep. 
Ouch. From our so storm. For one, cu- for, yeah, one culvert. So, two culverts. So, like, two culverts. Uh, yeah, one and a half. Um, so, like, that's... So. I mean, yeah, like, the answer is yes, but the also, the answer is also, like, we're screwed. Um, like, so, I mean, for me, but just... Because, you know, the, the stuff along the South River, like, has to be done. Um, and the... The the um, the idea that the one north of the Emerson Hollow is highest priority can make a good case for that. The problem is there's like half a dozen other spots that are challenging that title, um, like, mm-hmm. and and all of them are horrendous. Like, it is it feasible to move the road a little bit instead of like I, I'm serious. I'm serious. Well, I, I mean, when, I... When, when when you look at how many how many intrusions there are from the river to the road now, starting at like the um, start starting at the uh, the rec field, the, the South, yeah, South, River, South Meadow. River Meadow. So and and then walking your way down. Yes. There's a half dozen spots. Mm, so um, the team, by the way, that you, so you know who's working on this is Megan and Ryan Clary from the Fur Cog. Um, Oh no! You've got to be kidding! Me. I swear I didn't touch anything. No, you didn't. Um, let me just go back and not. <sighs> Even if we got the eight hundred thousand dollar grant, that's another two hundred thousand for the twenty five percent on the on the. Uh, right. Yeah. And I. I mean, match. I just. I just wonder whether like does. Like maybe the bank stabilization should come first. I don't know. I mean, because I'm not an engineer, but you know, I mean, can you hear us now, Megan? Now I can. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happens. You can see that we're in here twice. It does this to me for some reason. So, so the team who's working on this is is the Fergog GZA and also Nick Miller, um, who I had asked to weigh in as to priorities as well. And so we looked at the entire stretch between, like, the point you're talking about, the base of Cemetery Hill Road, where it comes close. That was one. And then, of course, between the two culverts that are being worked on now, and then further up north. The reason Nick had chosen the one further up north is because the level of the South River is so much higher, it's closer to the road. So he considered that to be the first priority. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Megan, but that's what I took away from it. Yeah. Yeah. We also thought that because it had already been designed by GZA, we wouldn't have to then create a whole new design um, and go through that whole process. We could get cost estimates pretty quickly. There's another section um, right at Emerson Hollow that is a much larger project that requires more of a floodplain reconnection and very big permitting issues. Mm -hmm. So they thought that um, the most northern section was probably the easiest and the most critical. I'm pulling up a map now so well if it's easier to look at it. Oh, sure. Let me just make you co-host so you can share that. I don't know if I can share. Yep, you should be able to share sure. now. Okay, let me get the edits. We're on the same page. Okay, so um, it's a little hard to see on Google Maps here. But um, Emerson, here at Emerson Hollow is where we're talking in terms of the culvert that we want to replace. Um, the river here is this, this northern bend here is where we're talking about potentially shoring up the staple of the banks there. The next one further south is right here. This is where there's kind of a little oxbow. This is where it could be very difficult for permitting, but um, it certainly is an area of concern. This northern area, though, because the banks are much steeper, Nick thought that that was more of a priority. Um, and then going down, there was one more spot at Cemetery Hill. This bed right here also is an issue um, that is concerning. Uh, but out of those three, uh, GZA and Nick Miller felt like the most northern section here is the most important to go after first. And not to make light of moving the road, but the amount of permitting involved with that and the expense, I think, would probably outweigh doing it a little bit more piecemeal, but I don't know. I don't have any experience with moving an entire road. So. Yeah, but even if you, I mean, 
like like how far how far could you move where the road? Where could you put it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, where else are you going to put well, it? Well, I mean, it would involve eminent domain. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that, but, but there's there are a lot of that's a lot of private property. On yeah, that road. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's that, but when you just crank work the numbers about how many different spots there are that have to be dealt with, um, we're going to run out of our money. Well, we're only talking about one. I know, I know. Megan was talking about maybe a tip. Yeah. So, yeah, so I did talk to Beth Janini, who's our transportation program manager for the FERCOG, asking about potential for tip funding, which is the state funding um, for large projects. We have projects right now programmed through 2027 that have out all of our funding has been allocated for. But she thinks beginning in 2027, and then after that, there is windows opening up for more larger funding projects. And so if we were got ducks in a row, and of course that requires going through MassDOT, which requires having a MassDOT qualified engineer and going through the MassDOT design process, which has its own headaches, um, you then become eligible for TIP funding and that pays for the project, potentially. Um, the town would have to pay for design of the project, but the actual construction implementation would go through the tip. You would have to wait till 27, 28, hoping the road is still there, <laughs> um, which is definitely an issue, but that is one source of funding for really large projects. Do you happen to know, Megan, if we do the culverts on Emerson Hollow and Shelburne Falls, if that will put us in better stead for getting tip funding, or would it make a difference? I don't think it makes a difference. Really what matters for TIP funding is, are you able to fund the design and are you able to get in and go through the mass dot design process? If you can get an engineer to get the design ready to go and if it fits with kind of, you, you know, there's a kind of a puzzle piece with the TIP is, you know, they have usually a million to two million dollars available every fiscal year. And so if you have a project that's ready to go designed and it has the right price tag, you could slide it in, and then that's kind of how the magic works there. So um, so there's have, really no points for whether you do previous projects or not. So then you have to commit to the design and paying for the design without any awareness as to whether or not you're paying for a, an expensive paperweight or something that's going to be useful for a TIPS project. Well, if you pay for the design, you'll have a design project. So whether you, the source of funding is the TIP or another project, you'll at least know what it's going to cost, what it's going to entail. But yes, point to, it's not going to be cheap. And if it's only a million for the, no, how, I'm sorry, what, how much was it again? 750. No, no, no. Oh, for, for the, the, the total. Eight, for it the, was eight, 850 for the northern bend. For the bend, right. But the amount of money that's available from, from the TIP project is a million? Oh, no, no. Uh, the tip can real vary. So there okay. we have, um, it can go up to 20 million every year. It okay. just depends on what other projects are in the hopper. You know, are, are we reconstructing um, huge roads or is it just a project here and there? Or is this a major artery in our town that like is right. actually like critical for exactly emergency, you know, infrastructure and you right. know, for people to get to work. And I mean, this is like, one road out of town, <laughs> one of our one of our few roads out of town. Right. Yeah, and that's why I think you could definitely make the case that it's tip eligible and tip worthy. Um, it's just that you do you do need to pay for the design usually. There are there are ways around it, but usually the town would have to pay for the design. So we could potentially then put both of the well, actually all the bank stabilization projects together in the tip. Potentially, it, it depends on you know what type of design concepts you're going with um, and how extensive they are. But if they all, I, I honestly, I don't know how much they would cost. The first, if the most northern one is 850, maybe the other are a couple of million as well, then yes, you could bundle all three together if it, yeah. you know, it's a 10 million project. But the, the, the bank stabilization, like that doesn't need to come first before the culvert repair like that's something that i mean like we should do that but it's not like not having done that is 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 a reason for not doing the culvert repair 
No, Nick and the other experts agreed that it's imperative that the culvert be repaired first so that the road is structurally sound and then start chipping away at the other threats to the road. So, I mean, I'll, uh, the easy part, I'll do a, a motion to sit for yes to the one stop. Uh, yeah, second. And, but that, what's our, what are we committing from? So what's your, what I was asking for tonight, uh, well, actually, I guess it'll be two things now, but we'll have to get the letter later. But I just wanted authorization from the board to apply for this grant, um, knowing all the parameters. For the and then, yeah. well, now I'm, I'm out of town. I think it's due June 5th, and I don't get back until June 6th. So we planned on submitting May 31st. Okay. So this was like the only meeting in between now and right. then where I could get your approval if you wanted to go forward. Um, and then we could get the letter to you to sign. Um, I'll run around and get your signatures <laughs> if you approve doing a letter of support. But so how much are we committing as far as a match for the one stop? Um, if we do 25%, it's uh, 188000 Okay, out of? 187500 187500 um, In the pot window. 187. <laughs> yeah, so um, that would be from the state, the 1.245 million. Right. Well, not anymore, it's not. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering, to yeah. Erica's point about critical infrastructure, we have two areas of getting in and out of the town in that direction. Bardwell's Ferry, which we know we can't use because of the bridge. Yeah. So now we have Shelburne Falls Road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm just wondering if there's a different avenue of approach with that in the discussion. Bardwell's Ferry is not uh, an option because the bridge is down. And that's out We're of our completely hands. reliant in in this area of direction for the town on Shelburne Falls Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we are right now yeah I mean <coughs> yeah and you know unfortunately we had not come up with this um, I, I would have to look into the logistics of this but perhaps you know if we get the approval now maybe we could do a special town meeting or something to ask for the ability to borrow the money for the match rather than have to take it out of the state funds I mean I know our accountant has said that that's okay but if if it, you know, depending on the timing, I don't know when this. These are usually awarded. Probably September. I believe that's the case. Yeah. So anyway. I mean, um, I think that's something where we need to bring in Paul, Mark, Natalie, McGovern. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it it seems us. like critical. Yeah. A problem. Yeah. That we should look and other directions for especially money. when you you know when you go down that river you see like even the one that they discount the one at the bottom of cemetery hill um it, when you see how much is eroded from that just mm -hmm. with the past mm -hmm. couple of storms it's really frightening right. yeah i mean that was like pretty it's, beefy yeah and that was right like up sand, against the river. sand beach for miles yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, but it's just, i feel like at the same time we can't just like wait for something to fail so that we have you know a reason to you know mm -hmm. advocate for more support and <laughs> we're already there <laughs> well, the well I, no I mean but I, so I, we do have this pot of money and the culverts already failed and it's clearly related to storm damage yeah and so. I feel like we've actually been pretty judicious well, with this pot of money and I feel like in general like we're kind of you know scrappy judicious. and we're scrappy and, judicious. and petty pinch yeah. like you know so I, I wouldn't want to not offer up this money is a potential match because we feel like you know like the state should be paying for all of it like I, I wouldn't want to miss this opportunity like if we could get seven hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah oh yeah and then by all means, <laughs> I completely I know, agree so. I just also but, think like yeah. that it, it needs to be a broader discussion about the severity of everything that's happening mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. the money that we received from the state um, it didn't factor in that we'd have to replace three two miles of a of mm -hmm. a critical right. road right and a, a very, bank yeah it, and a river super bank. expensive heavily permitted required you right. know uh, mm -hmm. you know and such an important road too i mean that like that's like especially like you said because the bridge is closed and we have no control over that that's yeah. messed off so we i mean like if 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 we can't use that road 
to get to Shelburne Falls. Like that's I mean, that's were, not just for our that for Shelburne Falls too. I, don't, I mean I don't that's know huge. How, I don't know how the detours went this weekend, but that was sort of a test drive for what it's like with detour, and you know the um, a lot of people went up Wilder Hill Road, Baptist Corner Road, through Ashfield 116 that way, but a lot of people also went you know um, past the uh, Bardwell's Ferry Road and then up uh, Reeds Bridge Road right. to Elm Street which is bumpy or whatever but it's not those aren't like ter it's still it's still a way in and out of town um, it but, just adds a lot of aggravation right but those are those are not roads that are meant to be that kind of evacuation and have that yeah. <laughs> and have that kind not of traffic not to mention emergency service right exactly emergency, you know yeah. a fire happens at somebody's <laughs> house down there how are yeah. they supposed to get there? We're going to rely on Buckland. Yeah. You know, we can't do that. <laughs> they have their own problems. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so you had a motion and a second. So no, yeah, all in favor. Aye. 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 Oh. <laughs> okay. um, um, sorry, did that include the letter of support, which we will yeah. Yeah. draft and then I'll run around and get your signature yeah. before the 31st so I yes. can get that in. Okay. And then the rest of the stuff, you know, keep trying to get someone else to pay for it. It would be nice if we, if FERCOG had an engineer on staff. Um, I mean, that's the, when, when you hear stuff like this, like, I, I get sore a little bit just because these programs, like this TIPS program that you described, just by the way it's structurally set up, it benefits primary, you know, the larger larger communities that have, mm. uh, you know, on staff engineer that, that that are able to have an on staff engineer. True. Although um, Megan, were you involved in the one in, in Buckland that happened? Because that that was a tip project that was like ten years in the making, right? Yep. It, it's um, it's a mass mass dot. It's a mass dot process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's something we've been advocating for a long time to relax those rules because what Phil said is exactly right. It's really a burden for those towns who don't have staff or funding or anything. Right. Right. But. Did the FERCOG help Buckland with that? We don't know. We don't have engineers on staff, so we can't help with design. So oh. they had, they did have to get their own engineer and go through the whole process. And it okay. was much longer than it probably should have been. Although I think we've learned a lot of things since then. And I think that the district, you guys are district no, two. Just, yeah, we're no. district one. We're district one. Just one. 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 District one. We're in district one. Yeah. yeah. So um, they've definitely, um, things have gotten a lot easier. With district one for sure okay great is the tips are the projects and the tips program um based on first come first serve or are they all severe like critical emergency situations that are right filed no and, and that's so um it's it's mostly first come first serve so if you can get your project designed and there's a slot that we could slide you into then you you know Especially with the justification that you guys have, how important this road is, how critical it is for emergencies, um, I, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, so the tip that is decided every year by the um, Franklin Regional uh, Transportation Planning Organization. They meet monthly. In fact, the next meeting is next week. Um, but every year they meet and talk about projects that should be going into the TIP every year. And they evaluate their statuses. What's been happening a lot lately is that towns haven't had the funding to do the design. And so we've kind of had a back, like there's been kind of empty spaces so that MassDOT has the funding to do the design. And so they've been able to slide their own big projects in, which has been taking up our own, a lot of our funding. So it would be great if we could get help towns um, with getting their own projects up and going, ready to go to take over those funding slots. And what can happen is, so next year, when we the community one-stop round comes out again, we could apply for design funding so that you don't necessarily have to pay for the design, but we can pay, use a grant to pay for the engineering, which then gets us ready to then apply for the state, for the, for the federal and state TIP funding. So there's definitely a lot of pieces that could get you there. What if the FERCOG just had a MassDOT engineer on staff? 
they Franklin County, back when it was a government, an actual county government, yeah. did have a, a, a road engineer for the county's use. We've been talking about it recently. The it stopped. We stopped having that position because there wasn't enough work to justify the town. It was a fee for service. And the towns didn't want to have to pay for those fees, and there wasn't enough at the point at that time to justify that. But it might be coming back to help. We have some serious discussions about it because that seems like an enormous value to membership in the yeah. FERCOG if this is yeah. the sticking point for towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Okay, but we voted, right? Thank you, Megan. We voted. Thanks. Yeah, thank we you voted. so much. And keep keep trying to get us stuff. <laughs> keep trying to get us stuff, Megan. I'm going outside right after this and looking under every rock. All right, good. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, yes. Um, discussion and vote. Appointing, I have to go through. Appointing Donna Sussex as a member of the Cultural Council for a term of 7-1-2024 through the 6-30-2027. If that's a motion, I second it because Donna is one of the most cultured yes, people yes, that I know. Yes, yes, <laughs> Highly cultured. The woman's full of culture. Yes, yes full of culture. <laughs> um, so, yeah, motion, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, yeah. Uh, Finance committee. What time is it? Six thirty six. We have Tom and Alan, but Alan's just going out to call John to see. Okay. Right. So the um, is if and I put pre town meeting on here just in case there's any. We don't know what three topics are going to be discussed. Yeah. And, yeah. But if anybody has a burning desire to talk about any any one of anything in particular, be my guest. No, but I mean we were going to discuss who should take what. I don't think we need but, it for pre town. Right. But after pre town, we should. Um, I got more information um, from the uh, Darius' IT guy oh, good. Uh, about the phone lines, so I can answer that with clarity, oh, good. if need be. Good, good, good. Warrants? Uh, yes. Yeah, and I did warrants. look over the warrants as well. Good. So we're ready to vote on those? Yeah, the, I only had one question to the um, invoice warrant, and Veronique answered it. So. Right. so, motion to approve the accounts payable warrant. In the amount of $184,700.24, the payroll warrant in the amount of $148,749.80, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $36,127.20. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> and, hey, we made it through our agenda. Now we're just actually waiting Perfect. on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the owl is painting your pain <laughs> as you go up and you're going like this and like, painting with the Oh, man. The technology, I didn't know that it was. Yeah. Pain cam. <laughs> yeah, pain cam. <laughs> the Phil pan. Wait, the Phil pain pan. <laughs> uh, I was really looking forward to that. I was like, oh, yeah, there's a sofa in this room. I can lay down on the sofa during this meeting. You could just stretch it on the table. So that's a good look. I guess we could talk about well while we're talking about Shelburne Falls Road, if there's other projects in town you'd like me to focus on like that. I mean that one was kind of a oh my gosh, it needs to get I mean what is Ron saying? Done. Um we, in terms of projects? Yeah, I mean he would know best, right? He's yeah. The, he's the Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to run that by him other than Shelburne Falls Road recently. So I mean, I think it'd be a good idea for all of us just to get with Ron and understand what his concerns are, mm -hmm. what he sees, or his crew see on a daily basis. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because eyes on it is the first thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We uh, weren't sure, honestly, about the, the Emerson Hollow. I mean, they're putting in for the stone, for, sorry, for the stream crossing, um, size culverts, but there's a chance that it doesn't have to be, um, which, you know, would drastically reduce the cost. And who so. decides, ultimately? Well, like, so if once they apply for the funding and we get it, then they would go into the design and permitting and that, you know, then they'd have to go in and see and speak with Natural Heritage and everybody else and right. see if that's 
I mean, Shelburne oh, Falls Road, as far as what I've seen driving, is the worst of the erosion yeah. that I've seen. Yeah. Um, there are other things that I'm wondering about, like obviously what happened with the Conway Pool, right? So we haven't done anything about that. There's no barrier to protect if there's another rainfall and all the road from yeah. from Fields Hill comes down in there again. Yeah. Well, they do have a Did culvert it? that was designed. It's not that, I mean, not a culvert, a box, what do you, whatever you call it, box culvert at the bottom of Fields Hill at the top of the swimming pool, sort of off center a little bit but I mean it, they could build a berm though but it and it was designed that's the thing about that one that that was designed like 10 years ago yeah and yeah. it proved completely inadequate now twice yeah because they should have just um, done a berm even if you had just a not even a foot tall berm it would have stopped the rocks at least from rushing down there I thought Cr Cricket Hill still East yeah, Cricket Hill and uh, Roaring Brook. Yeah, I mean, looks a little better, but I mean, it's not as used as right, Shelburne exactly. Falls. Exactly. Waitley looks. They did a great job by the big culvert on Waitley. That looks good. Um, yeah. yeah. That was the state. Yeah. yeah. That was Who was that? That was Maximilian. Maximilian. Oh yeah. For the state, yeah, for DFT. Um, Fields Hill's not back together yet, is it? It, it is. But they have a lot of work to do yeah. on it still. Right, that's what I'm getting Yeah. At. So as far as projects. You can still get up and down it. I mean, I've been on Poland also, and like I said, Roinbrook, which still has major areas, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it looks good. It's just like, what is, you yeah. know, looks can be deceiving, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So also, just so you're aware, um, Conway Pool had reached out to me because we have to be part of their emergency plans as well in case something happens. And when we do the tabletop exercise um, with MEMA in the fall, um, which will be a tabletop on if something happens with the Ashfield Dam and it breaks, the pool will also be involved in that process. So I thought that was supposed to be a top secret topic. No, we weren't so. supposed to talk about what the So what, what are the main about meetings. What are the main arteries outside of 116, right? We have Shelburne Falls Road, we Waitley have Waitley Road, Road yeah. and Bardwell's Ferry. Right? I mean, that's where I would say the concentration should be. <coughs> yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. Massa's gonna take care of 116. Yeah. Like, right. right. So but it's those other arteries that yeah. And the bridge and Bardwell's Ferry. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, imagine we have the new police officer we just <laughs> approved, right? Who lives in Buckland. Right. Guess how he get gets here. here. <laughs> Helicopter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Down Shelburne Falls Road. And something happens and he has a cruiser. It's just bad news. There's ways around. Yeah. No, there's not. We need funding. <laughs> I'm just trying to find my... I'll put in for a helicopter. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that. Well, there's a landing pad right at the top of uh, yeah. Pine Hill, right? Singular. <laughs> yeah, you might need to get a hover hovercraft. I know <laughs> <laughs> one of those um, jet packs. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could talk about my town administrator update if you want. Sure. Just to, <laughs> but we see if we have a meeting. Um, Throw me a pen. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. No worries. I just have it open. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. The main thing I actually wanted to chat oh, yeah. about was the um, the sign that has been requested by the transfer station attendants. Oh, yes. Because oh, yeah. um, I think they're having some issues with people. It was a little confusing. Yeah. The way it's worded is a little confusing. Oh, so is I, it? Okay. Yeah. Let me get back to that. Sorry. I have it here. Bear me. So basically it just says, for the convenience of everyone prior to arrival, have materials bagged, have materials sorted and separated. If bagged, have this bag sealed or tied. Have the bag sticker already tashed. 
place and compact or new vehicle the next location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as a, like a preliminary, let's get people still moving along. Now. Maybe it would be good just to have. We're still on time now. Oh. <laughs> the is coming now. You should be here in about 10 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we're still um, time out so I, I think it would just be good to have yeah, please be prepared when you arrive know, yeah. Yeah. okay and really then they can have that underneath <laughs> okay sure yeah I would replace for the convenience of everyone just be yeah be prepared and I could put one like outside the gate and I could put one right in front of the compactor you know yeah I mean, since I'm, I'd be getting a signs anyway. That does happen. I, every time I go there, somebody is bumbling around their car trying to get their things together that they could have gotten done before they got there. They're expressing their passive, aggressive yeah. Yeah. anger about the sticker regime by waiting to the last second and then throwing everything in there and then throwing a couple of stickers in afterwards. Yeah. Um, well, but they're not supposed to. I, do. I, I like think there's it. also issues with people with pickup trucks. Like when I, I, have, I bring my pickup truck, but I always like weigh it down and bungee it. Some people are doing that and you're seeing trash on the side of the road. Oh, just like flying out. Because it's flying out of people's pickup trucks. So I don't know. I'm I, not trying to make the sign too big, yeah. but it needs to be known that if people are not securing their trash, yeah. the chief also, will find them. Also, for me, like what it says, if bagged. I don't think it should say if bagged because your trash is supposed to be bagged. Well, they were talking about all materials, though, yes. which is might be what's confusing. Well, I know people are breaking oh, things down for yeah for the, um, for the bulky. bulky waste, which is really annoying. Yeah. And I've I've been one of those people before, but I mean, I would just say like bagged household trash instead of if bagged because it's okay. understood that all of your trash is supposed to be bagged, which. Everyone else in my house hates, but I swear to God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I thought I was going to be annoyed, but it's so great. Like, <laughs> So you wanted the first sentence to be again, please be prepared. Upon arrival. Upon arrival. Okay. Or even just like, be prepared. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's true. Just yeah, please just, be prepared or be prepared. Yeah, prepare <laughs> your trash. Okay. Please be prepared. Okay. Or flow of whatever. Of service, traffic, whatever. I don't know. Be prepared. Be prepared <laughs> when it's your turn, or be prepared for public humiliation. Be prepared to wait when people chat, or someone runs their car into the. You get fun. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, so there wasn't much else, but um, I don't know if you had a chance to see the idea about the repair cafes, which I'm kind of excited about. I think that would be great if there's like. Um, the question is, who would? Where would where would somebody be willing to house it? But it's it seems like it's kind of coming together because the folks at the FERCOG who do the mass in motion really like the idea because it gets seniors together with younger people and well everybody. Um, and also makes use of all this vast wisdom we have with all of our seniors. We do. We do. We have we have a phenomenal base of, of talent. Um, and like I said, I just I have not been able to do this myself. I just don't have time to pull it together. And it just occurred to me if we and then if we got the Franklin County Tech students involved and they were teaching other people or they were helping fix things for people. They were sharpening my chainsaw. You know. Yeah. I mean all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, I'm literally prepared to just go buy another chainsaw, which people tell me, like, no, yeah. you don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. about 20 chains that could be sharp <laughs> right out. Yeah. And um, the, the job that I had before this one was as the MAC, and that was the kind of thing we did. So you can, we could apply, somebody could apply for a technical assistance grant and get, like, 60 hours of Susan's time to pull this all together for mm -hmm. us and figure out the structure and everything. So that would be kind of nice. And I've spoken with Jan and... Um, at Franklin County Solid Waste District, and she's interested in the idea too. So the question is, where would it be housed, and yeah, like how would it actually work? Which is, you know, something I'd love to just kind of throw to Susan and say, hmm, can you figure this out? Plus, there are also grants for like up to ten thousand dollars that this might fit into, that we could use as a model. You know, so. I wonder, like. Would there potentially be room at the highway garage? You just like, you know, once every couple months or something, open up a bay? 
Well, usually it's the kind of thing that happens in a place like Town Hall or something. Okay, so <coughs> put a whole like bunch of tables or yeah. Okay, because I'm just thinking of like people bearing lawnmowers and yeah, you know. yeah. Um, it depends on yeah, because like we don't. That idea. And sometimes it's done like in a gymnasium of the school. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the bay, the bay. Of the I like the idea of a bay. You open park. it and people can just walk up to it. Yeah. And they see it, so you're not like wondering if it's something's in that building or whatever. Yeah. I like the idea of the bay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as it's an empty bay, like like whenever it's you know scheduled, and that's okay with the highway. <laughs> if we had that pavilion, you wanted that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much all I had. You know, I'm very very happy that the highway department was able to get the permission and then get that culvert replaced on an emergency basis. And so. how did how did the because I wasn't here this weekend, but how how did the traffic diversion work? I mean, was that have we heard I'm sure it was just as bad as it was when I mean we were shut down for months when Buckland was doing all their work. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. But but I believe everything went through okay in the morning for the funeral. I wasn't around at all because I was down at the presentation the whole time. Yeah. So. so everyone just took Reed's Bridge, basically. I think a lot of it was, yeah. yeah. I was told there was just one car that saw the detour signs and obeyed the detour signs, but very la a loud protest with the 30-second horn blast and the raised middle finger to all who could see. My goodness. But, hmm. You know. <laughs> One comment which did come up, and I'm, I'm taking seriously, although I'm not really sure how to deal with it, but it, that came up at the presentation was that people felt that they didn't know that this was going, the MVP project was going on. And I, I'm not really sure what to say since a postcard got sent to every house, it was in the currents, it's on the website and everything, but I'd still like to do the idea of a survey to find out how people get their information. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's, I can tell you. Half the people won't get the survey. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, we have 1,800 people. There's 1,800 different ways of getting information. Yeah. That's just not. Yeah. That's, I mean. Well, I, I would like that's to. That's just how, yeah, and, and everything that you do from now on will always have people complaining, how come I didn't know about it? But we it, haven't that, tried a, a drone dropping we, leaflets, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to draw yeah. biodegradable people. with like little wildflower seeds. <laughs> yeah. <And that's laughs> yeah, there's seeds embedded in right, paper. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was one of when I was before I ran. That was one of the things I kept saying is like information, information, information. But the town website's been updated. Get the currents. You know, um, there's Facebook pages for a lot of our departments. Right. Well, I have one so. in the works for Conway, the whole town, mm -hmm. but I haven't had a chance to finalize it. It's not going to be one that people comment on, but when we do the push from the website, all the all the notices will just go up automatically on, on that, and people can see the Facebook page, too. But then you need to go on Twitch, and... <laughs> We're um, not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> TikTok. we got to be... TikTok. Oh, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. No Instagram, no. Stitch. Yeah. Twitch is a stitch. Uh, Twitch is the gaming one. Uh, Discord awesome. also gaming. Yes. But I would like to try to figure out how to direct people more to sign up for notifications from the website. That's the yeah. yeah that's that's the really the key. Yeah. But I assume you do that when people say like, I didn't know about this thing. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I know about it? What's your email then do address? you say, yeah. you know, sign up? Right. I mean, like, because that's kind of. Yeah. I put that in the currents pretty often too. But like they say, it takes about ten times okay. before things oh. sink in. Takes more than. I just try. Like, I was like, try laying on the floor flat. I'm just worried I won't be able to get up. Well, we got a, we got the police department here. Do you want to? Um, <laughs> we can get you back up. If John will be here in a minute, do you want to do yeah. the, the the line to line because the rest of them are just for the finance committee, but that one's with the select board, so they could go ahead and vote before. All right, sounds good. Do they um, need? Oh, yeah, we can vote. I'll there's them, I'll there's just them one. Them. Chief, did you want to? We'll we'll get to the yeah. So the only one that you guys need to you know, sign off on the repair bill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Right. So, but I, no, don't sign on that. I have the here. <laughs> the actual. Here's our. This is our. Oh, and Phil's the only one who needs to sign this. 
It sounded like a not because you're the goal. Oh, as the chair. No, member, member. Finance no, committee okay. chair. Oh, member, member. Oh. Member, member. oh. Yes, two to one. <laughs> no, Wait, this looks different. No, you're right. It's chair, member, member. Oh, it got cut off. It got cut off. Oh, please use that one. I don't know how this got cut off. Let's use this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to <laughs> discuss it? No, no I, I read it. <laughs> well, you need, to, you need to vote to sign it, though. Okay. Um, so I make a motion that we, that we um, approve a line-to-line -line transfer for $3,694.37. The reason paying an outstanding balance on um, an invoice for cruiser repairs for the police department, the, re the invoice was only recently um, received and some of it is still in dispute. Um, so it may ultimately be a lesser amount than $3,694.37. Um, still an invoice that's due. It's an invoice that's due. So I move that we pay this invoice. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. You're a timeout too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys have a quorum or is Roy on? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, I make a motion to call the uh, finance committee to order. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Yeah. Oh, I you don't need this, right? So we have one one item that we can jointly do with the honorable And committee. they just did it, the one to sign is right there. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah. I have to make a motion here so I can. All right, this is a uh, make a motion to request for end of your line to line transfer made by uh, Police Chief Bates for the police department for the transfer of the amount of $3,694.37. And it'll be used for paying outstanding balance in the government auto group invoice for cruiser repairs. We recently received the invoice, and some of it is still in dispute. Uh oh. <laughs> How could that be? This expenditure is short and unforeseen because it took them an extended time to send an invoice and dispute a charge, which will lower the amount due. Okay, so this is the maximum amount. Sounds good. Any questions, comments? Oh. We Anyone make a motion? Make a motion. I make a motion. Anyone want a second? Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Remember this when it also. comes up for vote for a new cruiser. I remember, I remember this one. I yeah. go, if I ever have to go to the government, we owe, we owe the money. Yeah. Yeah. We're not spending it. We owe it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You want to do something? Yeah. Like my son's car, I swear to God. Like, just. <laughs> so those are the other three, which are just for the finance. Some point it's so not we can worth meet it. separately. Still, right? Or should we, want to we should just do it now. Yeah, you can do it right now. Except we literally There's just like made the car until he goes to college in August. Thank you. I'll take the pen dive. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. We have a motion here to request from the reserve fund transfer the amount of two thousand six hundred forty-one dollars and thirty-two cents. And it's to cover the workers' compensation audit. Uh-oh. Impossible to predict with the, the town of Logan, it's just true. So that's what happens. You pay people more, the workers' comp rate you know, yep. all goes up. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve the transfer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Yeah, they send you the bill before they do the audit. Well, you know, as the year yeah. goes by, I remember I dealt with it. The bill would come, yeah. but they hadn't done an audit yet. And right. of course they jumped it. Right, and then then they sent you another bill. Yeah, but you couldn't have predicted how much. Yeah, yeah they always set out in the year. Yeah, just so many. Yeah. All right, second item here. Under the second item, this is a request to retransfer from the reserve fund five thousand dollars, and the uh, balance and appropriation was thirty one dollars and ninety five cents. Uh oh. Additional unanticipated work needed to be done concerning the permanent replacement of the North Poland Bridge. So this was extra legal work that I had not anticipated when we set the FY24 budget for legal fees. Mm. And there's a whole mess of um, things that have to be done by town council with easements and deeds and 
Yeah. Oh. So there, there were all kinds of additional invoices dealing with the North Poland Bridge. Wow. So that the the original appropriation was ten thousand. We upped it to fifteen thousand for FY twenty five, but unfortunately, we need fifteen thousand for FY twenty four. Okay. So. All right. All right. I it may not use all of it. I'm hoping. But, yeah, yeah. But that's all that's left in there right now, and okay. I still have one bill to pay. Thank you. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. Anyone second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Let's just get on to the next one. Since all right. Next, a request for transfer from the reserve fund in the amount of six thousand one hundred forty-four dollars. The fiscal year 24 budget for Franklin County Tech had the wrong total. Oh my goodness, Principal Martin made a mistake. The way the assessment letter comes to the town does not include a total, but it does give a capital amount. Therefore, the general expenses budget was shorted by the amount of the capital assessment. The general expenditures has, should have been $166,074, not $159,930 bucks. Right, so when they send their letter, and I did mention to that this, them this year, and it's my fault as much mm -hmm. as, you know, but the letter says here's the general operating and here's the capital assessment. Yeah. Some of the schools include that <laughs> as part of their budget, and there wasn't a total, so it was my not reading it correctly. I've got it correct for FY25, but oh, good. this one we need for covering the bill mm -hmm. for this year. Overall, still in pretty good shape with the Franklin Tech. Good and bad. I make a any, make a motion to approve the transfer. Anyone want a second? Check it. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Thank you. You owe the money. You gotta pay. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have much for choice. You have much for choice. All right. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I knew all were here. How long does it take before you? That's Thank a you. question for you, Bernie. I will give this to, to our account tomorrow, and you'll be ready to go. Second. All in favor? Aye. So cool. Thanks. That Thanks. was just to approve Article 2. Alan, can you throw me that pen? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. I'll be ready for the next one. <laughs> Bad man. Thank you. Cool. Um, you have where to be exemplary. Where's the one? Thank you. Oh, he's going to sign it. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Are you, you going to come down here for the? Uh, no. Oh, you were. Oh, no. I had forgotten that we uh, that had scheduled this meeting specifically for these yeah. things. <laughs> we'll be meeting again. Thank guaranteed for some time. Thanks for coming out. We'll be meeting sometime between now, probably mid July. Always so many other people here. Well, you, well, you either you either email from Karen about the too strong and edible, or the, you uh, the story do you guys adjourn? Oh. No. Um, so our next meeting, um, the no mail. Not hard enough. I went flying. He was select board member comments concerns. Um, no mail announcements. Um, in, well, town meeting June first, Saturday, June first, ten a.m. Everyone should be there. Um, next select board meeting is June 3rd, okay. Monday, 6 yes. o'clock at Town Hall. Plus the senior, senior prom. And okay. the senior prom, so June 1st, the night of June 1st, after. So cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> senior prom at the library, and um, and then voting is Thursday the 6th. Thursday the 6th at Town Hall. From 11 so to 7. Busy week. 11, yes, a lot going on. So, um, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. We're adjourned.